1956, Nigeria discovered oil. Our choice of, of petronera, petrodollar over our agricultural base uh, revenue and uh, economic growth has led to a distortion. Everybody was concentrating on oil and nothing was being done much about the agriculture. This was in parts of the world. Uh, money was used to develop uh, or diversify or even saved. She quickly forgot the massive potential wealth locked up in her rich, fertile lands. Huge potential. If I look in my environment what the farmers are doing, huge potential. In the span of a few short years, her ground knot pyramids of the north quickly disappeared as all attention was turned to the oil rigs of the Niger Delta. By the year 2000, the price of oil became unstable and with Nigeria's depleting oil reserves, it was becoming evident that its oil-based economy was not sustainable. The problem for us then was there was no proper planning because we could have still used this oil money to develop agriculture. To answer the question of an uncertain future, there was a need for the country to return to its agricultural past. And in 2005, Fire State found a way to mine its green gold. state government in 2004 came up with a groundbreaking initiative to help bring back commercial agriculture by opening its lands and welcoming white farmers who had been evicted from their farms in Zimbabwe. Look we, we were all Zimbabwe farmers there all our lives farming farming there and then uh, through politics uh, uh, we were evicted from our farms and uh, this opportunity came up come to Nigeria by invitation and um, we came up and had a look uh, and we were quite positive what we saw. So what you have in Shunga today is a success story. Um, that's we have commercial, we have a commercial agricultural venture that is driving you know production in the state. Um, Shunga has probably the large, one of the largest poultry establishments. The products are seen everywhere, Be, even beyond Quara. We have large expanse of um, uh, production in maize. We have production in soya beans and so on. And what we're trying to do is to also get that model replicated in smaller units across the state. And so the state has, has, doing, has done well and is still, you know, not resting on its oars. It's doing so much more to ensure that Quara is one of the major producers of food in Nigeria. Well, we were invited in the year 2005 uh, by the Quara State. Um, we were very well received and uh, asked to come to this area and to see what we could be done with this land. When we got here, the land was uh, very virgin. Uh, a lot of bush, we cleared the bush, uh, and then decide on which was the best uh, routes to take for the what crops would be best for the area. Uh, the state did want to try um, dairy because there is very little dairy in the country at the time. And um, so I volunteered for that, uh, having dairy experience. And um, yeah, we imported uh, 170 Jersey cows. They flew into a lorry and uh, we brought them here. And that was in the year 2008. Um, yeah, we now got over 800 cows. Twelve years since its establishment, Shunga Farms is indeed proven to be 17,000 hectares of green gold as its profitability rises each passing year. We are getting results. For example now, where we got there, 
even the Nigerian national average yield of cassava used to be about 10 15. Okay? The Reti farm on Chonga farm was the first farm in Nigeria that produced 60 metric tons per hectare of cassava. So, in collaboration with IIT and the the, 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 we have the national awareness that no, so cassava can yield up to this one if we have good farming practices. Whatever you see here was bush before we came, but we've persevered, we've built it up into a very good business. Um, our farming is, is doing well, we've, we've, we're growing a lot of hectares of crops. We've got the, the capabilities of uh, producing about 3,000 litres of milk a day now. Um, that's, that's a drop in the bucket, it, it's nothing really nationally. Um, with that in mind, we have taken on um, a, a project here of producing a local dairy breed. Now Kenya have done this, Brazil have done this, whereby you take a breed, or you take a couple of breeds, mix them to try and get a breed which is more suitable for the area you live in. Uh, my Jersey cows are not, not really suitable, they're, they're weak and under these conditions and we have to keep them in sheds and keep them inside to, just to, to keep them alive. Um, however, the local Fulani cow is the most amazing, hardy, rugged animal. And uh, we have started crossbreeding uh, the two with quite good results. Um, we've got some crossbred um, cows now giving about 15 litres of milk a day. Um, but we, we can take this further by bringing in Holstein and, and, and some other breeds into the crossbreed program. But that is not a quick fix. That's going to take 10 years before we have a suitable breed. But only by doing that can we now have um, a dairy animal which we can um, put out into Nigeria, which we, ex we don't expect to die. The surrounding community has also benefited in several ways from the establishment of Shunga Farms. The, the, everywhere were bush, see bush everywhere, you know, the, the, the linkage from one community to the, road, to the other is just by the footpath or the one that can only allow the motorcycle. So that was the way uh, Shunga has been, just like any other rural community. Before the coming of this project, uh, altogether we have 33 communities for covered by the project. Before the coming of this project, only Shunga is using electricity, while the other adjoining communities that, uh, that make up the remaining 32 were not uh, connected. Where with the with the coming of the project, I can boldly tell you that the this all the communities, all the adjoining communities to the farms, numbering about 30, 32, apart from Shunga, have electricity now. And this is addition to the road that links the villages together. They have been widened to accommodate more vehicles, and that's why most most community people inhabitants they are now able to move their cars and all the lorries that bring the goods to one, from one market to the other, they are now linked with the uh, feeder road. The locals have been tremendous. Um, uh, we, we, I like to believe it's been a win-win situation. Uh, we have brought Nepa to, the, to, the, to their villages, uh, boreholes to the villages, which we put in personally. Um, and provided employment. The locals are farmers um, and we, we, we take that, we, we, we like to, to work that in with us because um, they need time to go back to their own farms. So for that reason they work for me until about 12 o'clock in, in the afternoon and then go back to the village and, and work in their lands in the afternoons. And that works very well, they, get, they, get, they earn a salary and they're still farmers. We have set up Equara Agrumor which is a one-stop investment destination, for, which is a one-stop shop for meeting all our farmers' needs. From the agro mall, the farmers can get seedlings, improved seedlings, they can get inputs, they can get fertilizer, they can get um, off-takers. So from that coordination center, we're able to achieve you know, um, an efficiently run agricultural system. So the state government has put all of these structures in place. Today we have an agency, like a committee, that is driving agriculture and it is coordinating all the aspects of agriculture from the farmers needs to the off takers to the input supply you know to the organization of farmers land um, allocation land identification and everything 
is within a well-knitted program that shows that the state government is conscious about you know, improving agriculture. And Kwara State today is probably one of the leading states in terms of agricultural development. The economic and social development of the surrounding communities has also helped foster a peaceful and cordial relationship between the farmers and the community. A significant percentage of the population is employed by the farm. At living, uh, living in Zimbabwe, uh, times, were, times were tough at the end there and the security was terrible. Uh, we came here in a fact-finding mission first. Uh, we came up to see the area, see the people, and we, we realized by moving in here we, we, we could cause uh, the same problems as we had back there. Uh, but we were reassured by all from the Emir to the, the Quarter State, the Emir, and then the locals themselves that that, that, that would not be the case. And um, because we were going to benefit them as well, as well as hopefully benefit ourselves, we, we could see a win-win situation. And um, on, on the basis of that, we came up here. And I must say, the locals have been very uh, accepting. And um, as I said earlier, we are very conscious of the fact we must bring them along with us. They must come along with us on this ride and uh, to try and improve the situation for both of us. There was massive employment for the people because there was a lot of plant layering, there was a lot of, you know, also land preparation. And so from first time I said, it's near maximum uh, employment for the youth. Then of course, um, as they got a bit more sophisticated equipment, uh, got more mechanized, uh, then eventually uh, the silo in a few more people, but not before they've imparted uh, some strong signals in terms of how to farm modern farming. And that's it. Since all those white men that come this Songa, we thank all the people to Songa, we thank God. All their farm. I work for I work for all these white man for the Disonga. I work for farm one, farm two, farm three, farm four, even the farm three here. Yeah, he helped them, even though he helped them not. Lord, Lord, Lord. Because even though this village area also they help them not. So I think it's best for them because they have this uh, kind of white man here. We came here and, and we saw what, what was on ground. It was subsistence farming. It was shift farming, shift cultivation where a farmer goes takes a piece of virgin, burns off all the trees, uh, plants his crops there for three to five years, runs out of nutrients, and then he shifts on to a next piece. Basically what we have came here to do and to show and is, is happening at the moment, farmers are now aware of fertilizer, they are aware of, of, of herbicides, farmers can work on one piece of land and they can do double cropping. We came here, there was absolutely, uh, our main crop is soybeans, it was no soybeans. I don't even think the people knew what soybeans were. Nobody used herbicides. Now I can go and show you excellent crops in this area. We've got an outgrower scheme going, uh, our company. We've got, we've got five farmers, which we've uh, fully uh, subsidized. We've given them all the inputs, and we're teaching them to grow commercial maize. The plan is to get that up to at least a three to a 5,000 hectare uh, project, where we can, we can utilize the farmers around us and the farmers can utilize us because we buy back and we guarantee prices and we pay them accordingly. Fire State has been a development partner of Shunga Farms from the onset and are still as committed as ever to ensuring that it realizes its full potential. Now, Kwara State is a state that has comparative advantage to grow almost anything. Um, but the state is currently concentrating on rice, cassava, maize, soya beans, and, um, well, cashew, castor oil. Uh, we can grow a lot more things like potato and, you know, other crops, but we are concentrating on those four. And the Kwara State has, is running, you know, integrated programs um, that support its desire to be a, an, invest, an agricultural investment destination. Um, in Quara today, we have what we call the Off-Takers Demand Driven Agriculture, which is a scheme that drives production. It empowers our farmers and encourages them to produce. 
Now the off-taker, the off-taker scheme drives production. So we have people who are off-takers who come to Quara to buy off what our uh, farmers produce. So that eliminates the risk of you know, um, that eliminates the risk of our farmers having to look for markets. It eliminates the risk of our farmers having to look for storage. Uh, when we started, when the, bank, the banks came in, 75% uh, of the shares were sold to the five uh, institutional investors that came in then. The Legacy Film Bank, Legacy PHB, Unity Bank, GTB, and uh, the Legacy um, Intercontinental, now Access. So they all came in with equity and debt uh, investment and they got 15% shares each. So 25% was left for Quara State. Now, going 